Greetings, children of the screen, your friendly neighborhood nerd scum here once again, and today I want to take just a couple of minutes to discuss the language at play in Cross Plus 100. So, if you're new here to the channel, I recently started covering Cross Plus 100 issue by issue. The first video for that is out, and a card for it should be popping up right about now, and the next video will come here shortly, YouTube gods providing that I don't get another content strike against my channel for covering this stuff, because that'd be great. So, if you enjoy this kind of content, make sure to subscribe to the channel so you can check out all the dope cross stuff I'm going to have coming out here in the future. So, without any further ado. Cross Plus 100 is written by Alan Moore, arguably one of the finest writers to ever grace the world of comics, and he is a word nerd beyond all reason, even to the point where he considers words and how they affect our perception of reality to be the true nature of magic, therefore dubbing himself a wizard. Once more said, representation allows for the organization of verbal language, with this sound or this collection of marks somehow also standing for that buffalo over there. Language is the necessary precursor of our apparently unique form of consciousness, humanity's first purposeful engagement with the phenomenon and possibilities of consciousness. Out of this engagement sprung almost full-blown the entirety of human culture. Writing, painting, song, music, theater, science, medicine, and even politics. So, as you can probably imagine, for someone with such a raging hard-on for linguistics, his specific words, the syntax, and the structure in which he delivers them is always extremely interesting, and Cross Plus 100 is no different. Mind you, he doesn't go quite as far as he does in some of his other works with things like Jerusalem, his novel, where there are sections of that book that when you just look at it look like complete and utter gibberish, just a collection of random letters. It's only whenever you read them out loud phonetically that you actually start to take on their meaning and then start looking at the individual spelling that he's used and you begin to see that the way he's spelling them is making other word associations with those words all by just having it written phonetically. This book does not go quite that far. Cross Plus 100 is much more akin to his work in, please forgive me for even bringing this up, Spawn Wildcats, where we see him establishing language, and through the evolution of that language and the time in which that language evolved, it says something very specific about the characters and the story that he's telling. And as Cross Plus 100 takes place 100 years in the future, he plays with this concept quite a lot. The use of language in this book is a little bit off-putting at first to be sure, but most of the time, even if you're not 100% sure exactly what it's supposed to mean, within the context that Moore provides, you're usually able to understand the general gist of the conversation and what's happening. Now frankly, some of these in this book are a little bit silly, and I think it's just more than anything else, Moore amusing himself, with things such as bottom boobies, which just means butt. It's a, it's a butt. Now, I definitely get the, like, literalness of it, uh, you know, the shape of the butt, the shape of boobies, they're very similar to each other, and the butt is on the bottom, which is why a colloquialism for, like, a long time for butt has been bottom, um, but despite the fact that it makes logical sense in terms of the evolution of the language and things of that nature, there's no clear-cut reasoning or logic behind why that would become kind of the general term. Then there are other simple things where it's changed a little bit, but it's very easy to understand what they're actually talking about within context. With examples of this being things like illbillies, which are the cross, but more of a rural inbred community of the cross, and things such as horror ball, which is kind of a derivative of horrible. As I said, very easy to understand, and then there are other things that are kind of associated more with kind of general colloquialisms of our time that have become distorted, such as fashion the pan, which is basically kind of a mutated form of a flash in the pan, which basically is just a passing fad or something of that nature. And likewise, we have other things such as tight and loosed, which are almost literal interpretations of those words as we now have them, but only applied to emotional states. So someone being loose would be someone who's falling apart or losing their composure. We also have things such as brown, which is essentially just, uh, it's shit. That's all it means is shit. <laughs> and of course, there are multiple kind of uh, derivatives of this, such as browned up, or, you know, that's almost more essentially like something's fucked up or it is shitty. There's brown hole, which is obviously an asshole, and then there's brown wipe, which is obviously toilet paper. 
the way that uh, profanity has progressed in this world is very interesting as almost every bit of profanity that you see in this book almost seems to be kind of a placeholder or replacement for the way that we currently would use the word fuck. And that kind of makes sense as in our modern day kind of culture, fuck is like the be all end all of curse words. It's the ultimate go to curse word, you know, like uh, and it can mean it's so versatile. It can be used to mean multiple different things. And we will see that happen very often in the cross plus 100 franchise. So yeah, those are all pretty simple, easy things to figure out. Like, you read the context of them, and your brain fills it in. You kind of know what it is already. However, there are some other things in this that, while they're logically very simple leaps, uh, they're core concepts or core phrases that are used in a way that if you don't comprehend them, then you're going to have a lot of trouble following things. So why don't we take a look at a few of those real fast. So first up, we have the word Offic, which means as far as we know. Now this is one of the ones that I kind of had the most issue with my first time reading it, because not only is this used kind of in the same way that we would use AD or BC in terms of like it's, you know, they don't, they say it's a hundred years after, but because things were so crazy, like it's the best they can tell. Um, but it's also used in some other ways, as in basically there's a situation that comes up where it's not the first time that we all fucked ourselves. Which, when you're first reading it, you think it's not the first time we fucked ourselves, which it is, but it's literally saying it's not the first time that we screwed ourselves over because we thought we knew more than we actually did. Up next, we have the word Algenia, which is a specific geographic area which includes Tennessee, but as you go through the series as a whole, what you'll find is it's kind of used just to mean America in general, like that general geographic area. Then, keeping up with the geography, since we're already here, we have Chuga, which is the human settlement in Chattanooga. You know, it's a city today in Tennessee, and it is the area which our main characters are located out of. Then we have the word petrol, which literally is petrol as in like gasoline, but within the context of Cross Plus 100, it means awesome or great or something positive, which probably harkens back to a time after the collapse of society where finding petrol was a real boon to them and helped them out a lot. It was, you know, like freaking Christmas morning. So over time, that word petrol has just become to mean something that is positive. Up next, we have Opsy which is to see or investigate or to check things out. Now see, this one's actually kind of strange because most of the words that uh, Moore chooses to use, even if they're a little bit kind of weird and it takes some getting used to, you can usually see a pretty legitimate and kind of logical flow of how it would have come to be that. But this, like, it doesn't seem like this would actually be the natural progression of this word, but it is actually because it ties into the themes of the book and actually relates to the original Greek language of uh, opsis, which means sight. And again, as I'm not going to spoil anything or give anything away, but as you get to the end of this volume, the theme of sight and the way that you see the world and interpret things becomes a very important aspect. So even though it doesn't make literal sense, thematically it works. And then one of the other ones that threw me for a big loop was Wi-Fi, uh, which I was like, how do they still have Wi-Fi? But no, no, it's not that. It's Wishful Fiction, which is kind of, you know, the science fiction books that uh, archivist Future Taylor likes to read. Uh, specifically, she has an encyclopedia of science fiction or of fantasy, and that is basically referred to as her Wi-Fi encyclopedia. Up next, we have the word Audi, as in to Audi or to sound or to hear something. Again, it's a very kind of logical evolution coming from the word audio. And then moving right along, as I was saying, the profanity in the world of Cross Plus 100 is really interesting. So we have Christ me, which essentially is just fuck me. Um, it's also important to take into account that within the world of Cross Plus 100, most religions outside of Islam have kind of fallen away. And even the ones that still survive have become mutated and changed and evolved into something very, very different different. So it doesn't necessarily have the same kind of uh, sacrilegious connotation that it might have today. So up next we have another one where, again, because as religion has kind of fallen out of favor, they don't really have the same associations with those kind of words that we would have today. So we have the word church face, which means crazy, because to them, church in of itself doesn't really have any meaning, but the symbol of the cross is what they know of the infected. So something is church-faced, it means that it is crazy or it is going crazy. So up next we have the word movie. Now again, in the world that these people live in, they know what a movie is. Uh, they're aware of the 
idea of a movie, and some people have actually seen movies for a long time. They've been scavenging technology and anything they can use from, you know, abandoned settlements and townships. But most people have never seen a movie. So the idea of a movie, just something that is so grand and epic, it's become an expression that means something spectacular. So, you know, if someone sees something truly amazing, they might say, oh, that is so movie. And the last one that I'm going to explicitly include here, not that is necessarily one that is the most difficult to understand, but because it's used more often than I think just about any of these other ones except for maybe Opsy or Brown, and it is one that usually comes up when we're talking about important things in the book, is the term skull. Um, also, so a few people asked me about it, so I'm going to address it specifically. There are also several more permeations of this one than some of the other words that we've discussed here. So skull, all it really means is to think about something, to imagine it, you know, to have an idea or an understanding of something. But at the same time, there's also skull baby, which is essentially a brainchild or an idea. Then you also have skull bull, which is like an obsession or a recurring thought, something that just haunts your thoughts and never leaves your mind. Right on, there you have it, children of the screen. So, I hope that this video gives some of you who are having a little trouble grasping the kind of usage and context of the language in Cross Plus 100. And if you need a little bit more, down in the description below, I am linking a glossary for the vocabulary of the book because, thankfully, someone else did all the work for us. Because even for me, and I had a pretty good understanding of it as I was reading through it, it was very, very helpful, specifically like the off-fuck thing. If it hadn't been mentioned in here, I probably would have completely missed the act actual meaning and connotation of that, and even though that's not one that is really necessary to understand the story, it's definitely helpful. As I said, guys, Alan Moore is a wordsmith like few others, and I really feel that his use of the future speak in this book not only makes this book feel unique and stand out from the volumes that have come before it in the original series, but it also gives us a good idea of the ever-constant changing and shifting nature of humanity throughout the hundred years since the outbreak. And I really enjoy it, just like I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like and share it with some friends, as that's always important for helping the channel grow. And as I said before, if you're not subscribed, then make sure to subscribe so you can check out all the dope cross content I'm going to have coming out here in the future. Thank you very much, children on the screen. Hope you all have a good one. Nerd scum. Ow.